Welcome back, Warrior. We are still in Mosiah, and we are in Mosiah chapter 28. I'm going to get right into that. We are trying to get caught up, but I realize that if I'm not early, then that's what's going to happen. But again, we don't want to get discouraged. So, the sons of Mosiah shall have eternal life. They go to preach to the Lamanites. Mosiah translates the Jaredite plates and the two seer stones with the two seer stones. I'm like, well, okay, here we are. Now it came to pass that after the sons of Mosiah had done all these things, they took a small number with them and returned to their father, the king, and desired of him that he would grant unto them that they might with these whom they had selected go up to the land of Nephi that they might preach the things which they had heard, and that they might impart the word of God to their brethren, the Lamanites, that perhaps they might bring them to a knowledge of the Lord their God and convince them of the iniquity of their fathers, and that perhaps they might cure them of their hatred towards the Nephites, that they might also be brought to rejoice in the, in the Lord their God, that they might become friendly one to another, and that there should be no more contentions in all the land which the Lord their God had given them. Now, they were desirous that salvation should be declared to every creature, for they could not bear that any human soul should perish, yea, even the very thoughts that any soul should endure endless torment did cause them to quake and tremble. Isn't that awesome? Like just the charity that they had for others, instead of like having that com competition, um, a sense of competition against each other, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't what they were feeling for them. It was real charity. So I think that's awesome. And thus did the Spirit of the Lord work upon them, for they were the very vilest of sinners. And the Lord saw fit in his infinite mercy to spare them. Nevertheless, they suffered much anguish of soul because of their iniquity, suffering much and fearing that they should be cast off forever. So um, there's a quote from President Henry B. Eyring. And hold on, but before I read that, it says the sons of Mosiah had been going around preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and their hearts began to turn towards the Lamanites. This same thing happened to Enos when he repented and became a new man. Their hearts were not full of hate or pride or competition, but full of love and charity for all mankind. So then what about the Lamanites? Imagine what the gospel of Jesus Christ could do for them. Imagine the centuries old wounds it would heal between them and the Nephites. This quote from President Eyring goes perfectly with, the, with these scriptures. The idea of man down was not just reserved for Nephites, but for every creature that they could not bear that any human soul should perish. Okay, so here's the quote from President Eyring. Quote, you will, be, you will need bravery and you will need bold, boldness because you are enlisted in the Lord's army in the last dispensation. This is not a time of peace. That has been so since Satan arrayed his forces against our Heavenly Father's plan in the pre-mortal existence. We don't know the details of the combat then, but we know one result. Satan and his followers were cast down into the earth, and since the creation of Adam and Eve, the conflict has continued. We have seen it intensify, and the scriptures suggest that war will become more violent and the spiritual casualties of the on the Lord's side will mount. Mm. Almost all of us have seen a battlefield portrayed in a film or read the depiction in a story over the din of explosions and the shouts of soldiers. There comes a cry, man down. When that cry sounds, faithful fellow soldiers will move toward the sound. Another soldier to will move toward the sound. Another soldier or a me medic will ignore danger and move to the injured comrade. I pray that you will develop the bravery and love for Heavenly Father's children that led the sons of Mosiah to plead for the chance to face death and danger, to take the gospel to, the, to a hardened people. Their desire and their bravery came from feeling responsible for the eternal happiness of strangers in danger of eternal misery. End quote. And I think that is so amazing uh, because sometimes we don't want to reach out to those 
because there's so many reasons because you know maybe we get anxiety when we talk to people or maybe we um jumble our words or maybe we don't want to share our testimony because it's too close to our heart we don't want it to we don't want to be offended and we don't want to be hurt uh, we don't want to challenge our things because we don't know everything so we don't want that challenge of like questions and stuff um something that is so so interesting is my children ask me questions all the time about scriptures and i don't know the answers to all of them and it's a lot of scriptural speculation that has to happen um and then i tell them that they have to go find out for themselves you know or maybe it's a question for dad maybe he'll understand it a little bit better than i understand it right or we can find out together and so it's just a lot of those things but if we don't put ourselves in a position where people will at least trust us to ask questions then we won't be there for them um, the way that the lord wants us to be there for them and so we do need to have courage and it does take bravery and it is dangerous sometimes but that is what president iring is trying to tell us like it's going to be okay because we're on the lord's side and so i i love that quote april 2009 general conference okay verses five to nine and it came to pass that they did plead with their father many days that they might go up to the land of nephi and king mosiah went and inquired of the lord if he should let his sons go up among the lamanites to preach the word now this would be very dangerous so of course the king is um worried about his son and his friends and so like it makes sense that they, he wouldn't want them to do that and the lord said unto mosiah let them go up for many shall believe on their words and they shall have eternal life and i will deliver thy sons out of the hands of the lamanites and that is the lord's answer isn't that beautiful just like so awesome how the lord was like yeah let them go and sometimes that's hard as a parent you know like what is the answer to parents want when their children want to serve missions for the lord like i can only think of hold on so it's funny when i get emotional it's like then i get interrupted uh <laughs> that's like what it is with all scripture study though right like you can't always just have it silent unless you wake up super early and guess what i did not wake up super early today so this is how we're doing it but you know what's interesting the other day uh my daughter didn't see me read my scriptures because i woke up early and i took care of it you know i was having my time with the lord it's kind of nice when it's not interrupted actually it's really nice when it's not interrupted and she's like you didn't like in the evening we usually cover like things that what what was your favorite thing for today anyway she was like mom you didn't read scriptures and i was like i i did read scriptures and she's like no you didn't and i was like okay well i did but actually you didn't see me read scriptures and she's like oh and like she kind of got a little bit sad but also i mean i was like that's crazy that like just one day one day it takes just one day for her to realize to notice that i didn't read my scriptures that one day and i was like i didn't really think like i don't necessarily think that that's the best time for me to read is when she is awake and doing things because i like to be with her right and so um but you know the way that the day was working out that day when i was planning and i was like oh i better wake up early to make sure i get that done or else it's going to be too busy and in fact i've done that a couple times because it is too busy and she notices that and i'm like oh man that's kind of hard because i thought that that would free me up to have more time with her but you know what the time that really does matter is the time that i spend in the scriptures that she can see so that she'll know that she needs to do that too and that that's where i get my strength and that if she wants to get strength that that's what she's gonna want to do also and so i'm like oh so wild you know you think you do certain things to to do them for your kids or with your kids or without your kids or whatever and then it, the opposite completely happens you know you just it's like you can't it's like you can't win <laughs> 
But anyway, um, so, so I love like missionary moms. Um, it's gotta be so hard. And in fact, I told my son, I'm like, I'll probably be the one that's bringing you home. You won't even have to struggle on your mission. It'll be me that is struggling. And I will want to come pick you up every day. And right now we have two nephews out. It is gotta be so hard because it's two nephews to one mama because she has twins and just making me think about her right now. I'm like, I need to reach out to her and see how she's doing. Um, Cause you know, we don't, we don't think of each other as often as we need to, as often as the Lord would have us think of each other. So anyway, um, it is, it is hard to let our children serve the Lord. And if you have a missionary mama friend, reach out. Or if you have a missionary mama family member, reach out to her and give support. Because um, it is hard and it takes courage to be one of those missionary moms. Okay. Verse eight, and it came to pass that Mosiah granted that they might go and do according to their request. And they took their journey into the wilderness to go up to preach the word among the Lamanites. And I shall give an account of their proceedings hereafter. Okay, so um, it says between Alma 17 and 27 is when the hereafter is going to be. Hello, Finn. Okay, so it says these sons were not going to go without Mosiah's permission. And we can see in verse 5 how much convincing it took. There is a lot to consider here. First, these are his sons and also the Lamanites are not a pot you want to stir. Sending the king's sons down there could backfire and be misunderstood. Mosiah turns to the Lord and the Lord gives him confidence and a promise that Mosiah probably thought about every day his sons were gone right? They will be a great blessing upon many and the Lord will deliver them. So this is a father and a king who will be acting in faith, just like every missionary parent today. See, I love it. Okay. Verse 10. Now King Mosiah had no one to confer the kingdom upon for there was not any of his sons who would accept of the kingdom. Therefore he took the records, which were engraven on the plates of brass and also the plates of Nephi and all the things which he had kept and preserved according to the commandments of God. After having translated and caused to be written the records which were on the plates of gold, which had been found by the people of Limhi, which were delivered to him by the hand of Limhi. And this he did because of the great anxiety of his people, for there were, they were desirous behold, beyond measure to know concerning those people who had been destroyed. And now he translated them by the means of these two stones, which were fastened into two rims of a bow. Now these things were prepared from the beginning and were handed down from generation to generation for the purpose of interpreting languages. And they have been kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord that, they, that he should discover to every people or to every creature who should possess the land, the iniquities and abominations of his people. And whosoever has these things is called seer after the manner of old times. Now, after Mosiah had finished translating these records, <sighs> Behold, sorry, mm -hmm. it gave an account of the people who were destroyed from the time that they were back, destroyed back to the building of the great tower at the time the Lord confounded the language of the people. And they were scattered abroad upon the face of all the earth, yea, and even from that time back unto the creation of Adam. So this is the translating the Jaredite plates. Now this account did cause the people of Mosiah to mourn exceedingly. Yea, they were filled with sorrow. Nevertheless, it gave them much knowledge in the which they did rejoice. And this account shall be written hereafter. For behold, it is expedient that all people should know the things which are written in this account. Okay, so the re that record was passed on to Alma the Younger, who will pass them on to the next record keeper, who will pass them on to the next record keeper until... The land it, until they land in the hands of the last living Nephite, Moroni. 
and Moroni will choose to abridge and include that record with the plates and now and we now have that record in our Book of Mormon. It is the Book of Ether. So we have a book written by the prophet Ether, translated by Mosiah, abridged by Moroni, and then translated by Joseph Smith. Ooh, isn't that so cool? That is a lot of prophets involved in bringing that book forth to the world. Mm. Okay, verse 20. Now, and now, as I said unto you, that after King Mosiah had done these things, he took the plates of brass and all the things which he had kept and conferred them upon Alma, who was the son of Alma, yea, and all the record, wait, yea, all the records and also the interpreters and conferred them upon him and commanded him that he should keep and preserve them and also keep a record of the people, handing them down from one generation to another, even as they had been handed down from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. So these are the sacred records. Okay, that is it. We're going to read our, read it, live it. Okay, so it is interesting that the Spirit will still work with the very vilest of sinners. He wants to work upon all of us. This is the Spirit wants to work upon all of us, no matter where we are in our journey. And this is so true. Like I remember specific times when I have felt the Spirit reaching out to me and trying to help me when I wasn't making good choices. And so when the Lord promises us that the Spirit will be with us always, that He will be with us always after we are baptized, it is not a lie. Um, the Spirit is with us always, but we're not always paying attention. And that's the difference. Um, how is the Spirit of the Lord working upon you today? Welcome Him. Mm, love it. Love it. Read it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> I don't even know. I thought it was just read it, live it. But now I'm like, maybe it's called read it, live it, love it. Because now it's just read it, live it, but then love it, right? Because it's amazing. All right. Until Mosiah chapter 29. Stay strong, warrior. <laughs>